the flap and you need to find place your incision. This is one of the typical examples uh, where we have placed the incision somewhere here and did a, 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 a axillary dissection through this, mastectomized the patient and reconstructed. Here the whole nipple areolar complex is retained because the tumor was somewhere here, clearly two centimeters away. And then the nipple areolar complex is retained. This is a patient who had a modified radical mastectomy with the primary reconstruction. Um, I, I do not know how many of you know about the a precarious blood supply of the nipple areolar complex. Generally, when you do a reduction mammoplasty, you just tend to retain the, the vertical axis because the vertical axis is the one which is most dependable and then you manipulate the nipple areolar complex. So it is better to avoid a midline kind of an incision or some incision which overlies the nipple areolar complex because you are sure to, you know, kind of compromise on the vascularity of that. Now you have a large number of pedicle, the distant flaps like tram flap, it has got good volume, achieves abdominoplasty as well, acceptable donor state star. You could have, uh, you know, some adjustments where you could bring in uh, momentum into the zone four uh, in, in such kind of situations to make it more vascular uh, or a vertically uh, based uh, VRAM flap or a few flap, few flap, few flap, few flap, few flap. Uh, transplant. All these things are possible. So what we do in our routine practice is a transplant, which is the workhorse of uh, breast reconstruction using a pedicle flap. You all know that the superior epigastric artery is a branch of or it's a continuation of the internal mammary. It lies over the uh, posterior uh, rectus sheath and the rectus muscle overlies it and it makes an anastomosis at the lower part with the inferior epigastric, deep inferior epigastric artery, which is a branch of the superficial femoral vessel. So you have an arcade of blessed vessel which is going through this and perforators are sent out. The maximum number of perforators are around the region of the umbilicus. So if you had take a flap based around the umbilicus, based on this pedicle, it is called a transverse rectus abdominis mycotaneous flap. And there are four zones. The zone one is overlying the ipsilateral rectus. Zone two is contralateral rectus. Zone three is lateral to the rectus and zone four. And from here, you can understand that the zone four is the least vascular area. In case you want to harvest this, you can pre-augment by can, can it do a delay here so that this becomes the blood supply comes more from here, or you can put momentum underneath. I'll show you both uh, in, 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 in comes. And your incision goes like this. You just have the skin paddle. You go through the subcutaneous tissue, muscle, and you stay in the, in the plane just above the posterior rectus sheath. This is the posterior rectus sheath. This is the arcus semilunaris. Only the peritoneum becomes the transverse. Fascia becomes the posterior wall there. Now, when we started the breast reconstruction, I have started uh, somewhere in middle of 90s, 25, 27 years back. We were not sure about how it works. Uh, and we used to have vertical incision because we all do laparotomy and we know the anatomy. And based on this, from the inferior part, we used to take flap and put this flap, but then we later on moved on to the funnel steel kind of incision, which I'll tell. So one of the progression was vertical to horizontal process. So this car is better. Our earlier reconstructions have been with uh, harvesting from around the region of the umbilicus. You can see the scar, we'll show you in that. We could produce, you could have a lot of volume of reconstruction. It has got enough ptosis, the volume is good. And if the patient wears a bra, she would look exactly as normal, uh, you know, woman, except and the tangential view, the lateral view is also perfect. So you have produced volume reconstruction, you have given adequate doses. So that is possible. And yet another, you can see the scar of the periumbilical area, which could go under the sari and uh, the lateral view. Some adjustment has to be there. And you wear the ones you wear the bra, it looks uh, the, the breast mount looks the same. Now this is what I meant from umbilical area, 
we have gone down to the final steel area. We have some issues, we'll dis discuss that later. And all these things, we have achieved the breast mount, the ptosis, the submammary fold, everything is acceptable. So these are the various uh, breast reconstructions, various types uh, where it's acceptable. And here you see it settles down over a period of time, the skin matches, and there will be a very thin differentiation between the you know, nave uh, skin and this. And if this lady wears the breast bra, she can easily go into the society without much of problem. Does it require to have always the nipplarialar complex uh, removed? It is not required. We have published our own data in British Journal. If and others do have, if the tumor is away two centimeters from the nipplarialar complex, the chance of nipplarialar complex getting involved is going to be minimal or less. So based on this, if you if you create a plane where the plate of the nipplarialar complex is retained with its blood supply, it appears more good to the patient. I know for certain that the subareolar plexus of safety is one of the major concerns, but then the there could be a space between the plate and the subareolar tissue where you could harvest these things. And we have been using fanon steel incision like this, and you can see this has gone here, and this is the kind of reconstruction you put drains and come out. This is another reconstruction where you have gone through the lateral incision, a small incision. You can see another one here, small incisions. And this is a post mastectomized patient with a reconstruction with a tram flap. This is uh, another situation where nipplarialar complex is retained, but skin had to be sacrificed, and you have brought in myocutaneous flap here to reconstruct the lateral skin. So whenever there is a combination permutation that is possible, you know, there is no skin, skin loss here. There is a lateral incision here. Here the lateral skin had to be lost. We, we have removed it and nipplar, sorry, the skin has brought, been brought in there. Uh, the location of the flap could be different. Upper, upper quadrant, this is not actually a breast carcinoma. This is actually a so, so this was a case of a uh, phylloids, large phylloids, which, which has almost fungated to the skin. I had to sacrifice a lot of skin there. So uh, different kinds of reconstructions are possible. And this is the current status of a reconstruction. Uh, can anybody say which breast is reconstructed, which breast has been... Uh, I will leave it to Ishwar to answer me the question. I thought Ishwar was somewhere here. Okay. Anyway, left this is the breast. left breast. It's in fact the right breast that is uh, reconstructed. Yes, yes slightly yes. above, and this is a kind of reconstruction where you can afford to you, you do now today. The scar is lateral, or some, sometimes we put it so lateral that you wouldn't see the scar, even if the patient. Uh, this is a mastectomized reconstructed, uh, you know, uh, breast. So this is what we are looking at. And if you leave behind the nerve supply, which is from the fourth intercostal, third intercostal space, the nipplarialar complex still retains its targosity. And that, uh, that, that uh, you know, the special uh, contractile feel during the erotic uh, phase of the lady. So that can also be retained, uh, the sensitivity as well as these things. Now, last, uh, the breast bounds can be. You know, uh, there are many people who have been, uh, who have had uh, breast reconstruction. They only had mounts. And if they are worried about nipplarialar complex, you can have different techniques. Tattooing is one technique, uh, but then the feel is different. So here we have actually reconstructed the nipplarialar complex using the labia minora. The reason for taking labia minora is the the texture of radio labia minora as well as the nipplarialar complex has got a fair match. So we have reconstructed. There will be partial skin necrosis and all those things. That's okay. But then it will appear, uh, you know, quite okay comparable to this. And there is a slight dosis difference, etc. here. But then that's okay when you wear the breast. Now, we, we have been doing this procedure for long with the result that we are now getting patients 
who have got another primary on the contralateral breast. This is a typical example. This lady had a right-sided breast reconstruction and this was done, the second surgery was done in 2005 where the other uh, breast showed, uh, you know, uh, another primary. And during those days, I was confining myself to a, a single site above the umbilicus. So this site, the rectus was kept intact. Uh, I have gone away from little, see, the, 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 when you do a reconstruction, by and large, for a right-sided breast, you take a left-sided uh, uh, rectus for the reason that the fulcrum that you rotate will not impinge on to the uh, vascularity. So generally, right-sided breasts are reconstructed with left-sided uh, tram uh, and vice versa. So there was a time when we used to confine ourselves to one segment. And since that lady had a spared, uh, you know, uh, the left, uh, uh, sorry, right uh, rectus, I thought of reconstructing the left breast also, and she was not in an old age, but she incidentally also had an incisional hernia there. So we thought of combining all those things together, uh, having a rectus abdominis, a microtaneous flap for uh, this area, and correcting the abdominoplasty as well. And that's the final result that you obtain on table. Uh, I'll tell you the story a little later on. Now, this is uh, a case of latissimus dorsi. Uh, the problem with latissimus dorsi in our part of the country, India, particularly Indian ladies, uh, the fat is much less, particularly the back if you are looking at a huge volume reconstruction. So by and large, we reserve latissimus dorsi as a flap for uh, breast uh, conservative therapy where there is a minimal tissue volume loss and you can harvest it from either from the same incision, through the same incision, or uh, through a different incision. The other distant flaps are teres major and omental flap. I have done a few omental flap. Uh, through laparoscopy, we harvest the omentum uh, and bring it on to the, the zone 4 to augment, or you directly push it to the breast. But the problem with the problem with the omentum is that the amount of omentum that is harvestable varies from patient to patient and you can get a, get an idea only after you open into the abdomen through a laparoscope. So sometimes it may be difficult. We now don't use that as a routine, but at times when zone 4 requires augmentation, prefabrication, we use that. Otherwise, omentum is not generally used. Second important problem is the feel of the omentum. Feed of the omentum after some time, it gets easily saponified and fat necrosis will happen. So the feed of the breast, once you do with the omentum, is going to be much different from the tram. So this is how, this is what we have done in 2005. Omentum is brought in. This is straight brought in from the, the, uh, the abdomen. Here, you, we, we are putting that and playing it around. So this is something which we have done. We do it on a very, very selected group of patients, particularly very, very, you know, small-breasted young patient who would like to have tissue reconstruction and you cannot afford to have a, 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 you know, prosthetic implant for that. There are other, other free flaps, free tram, free gluteus maximus and LD flap. I'll, I'll show you something towards the end. DIEP is uh, deep inferior epigastric flap. Uh, Deep. So one need to one need to look at it in that way also. There are other flaps uh, which are rarely used, but uh, the S gap flap and L gap flap are something which are coming up. They are taken from the gluteal maximus. It's, 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 it's something which. Uh, we show these pictures a little later on if time permits. Somebody whose child is crying, can you just mute the thing? Yeah. Uh, all that I have told are the good results. I must also tell on the equal note that we have, you know, a certain patients who are not doing well. This is a young lady 
we tried to reconstruct the star is not good to me there are puckerings here you look at her uh, abdomen it is not good at all the reconstruction has not come well so though we had a you know a a nipplerialar complex preserving this has not had the adequate doses uh, you know the doses i mean the submammary fold and things like that so to me uh, this reconstruction is an inferiorly scored reconstruction and this also is inferiorly scored because there is hardly any fat so we had to do something to correct this like liposuction to correct this uh, but uh, this was good enough for her uh, to accept uh, we do get uh, necrosis of the skin on the donor side necrosis of the skin on the on the flat side some of the breast becomes stuck the ptosis is not as good as you think all these things are minor complications and this is a major complication where they i had to use this is a young lady in in pre pre uh, conceived lady the breast was small and we had to go for a mastectomy she was very keen on reconstruction uh, we had placed an incision much above because you know the tissues had been the fulcrum had been not the right thing so i had to place the incision i had to take the zone 4 zone 4 got into necrosis and today if you have a zone 4 we go for a microvascular augmentation see another lady reconstruction is now looking at this reconstruction i don't think any lady would accept reconstruction so bad result uh, this one another patient who had got a bilateral which i showed at a central area of abdominal necrosis central area of the, the breast has taken well but the central area has gone another young lady where we had uh, tried to retain the nipplerialar complex the entire skin envelope and to taken this one all of them had problems to me the nipple went off the areola could be partially salvaged there was a necrosis of the skin which had to be debrided and this area has also to be debrided so ultimately i really do not know whether i have done good to this patient so bad results for that is also possible so my all aim is ladies uh, those listeners uh, it is to impress upon you that uh, you know a female breast which is good looking should be tried to be you know spared if possible in the nipplerialar complex or at least get retained so now you can ask questions uh, to me yeah um, thank you sir thanks for uh, such a wonderful class as usual uh, dr abizar kapadia what is your question uh, hello can you hear me yeah yes yeah yeah um, i congratulate you for a good and a honest presentation there on uh, breast uh, reconstruction i myself is a plastic surgeon and uh, our uh, our philosophy is a little different than what you have shown i'm not uh, i'm not criticizing anything but uh, our thing when we use abdominal flap we always do a muscle sparing and uh, we do a free df flap uh, so that uh, the rectus muscle is not taken which uh, leads to very minimal uh, donor site mobility of uh, incisional hernias and uh, obviously it's a microvascular procedure it takes much more time but it gives equal amount of good aesthetics and uh, you taking only the uh, fat and the skin part of it uh, and especially if you are doing a skin sparing or a nipple sparing mastectomy it gives uh, very good results as well so uh, I, i would just uh, sum it up as uh, saying that do you have a plastic surgeon on board and do you do those kind of flaps at all uh where the donor site mobility could be reduced as much as possible sir yeah i have i have no objections to that but then uh, you know the issue here is the question of time and the, the availability and the cash we finish the whole program probably in uh, a couple of couple of hours and finish with it because we have a large volume uh, you know of uh, patients so if if the expertise is available and if if uh, you know the patient can afford and the time can be there you know microvascular flap there are lots of microvascular flaps that are available and uh, you know uh, gluteal artery flap uh, would be one of the fantastic flaps i've seen uh, quite a few uh, from belgium where they do extremely well with the both superiorly pedicle and inferior pedicle 
uh, gluteal artery flap also. I'm not against uh, any kind of reconstruction. I just wanted to drive in the concept of reconstruction. Definitely, sir. I think you've done a good job on that. Another one is that uh, how many of your patients uh, are post uh, radiotherapy, which require a reconstruction? What do you do in those cases where there is a secondary reconstruction, and especially the patient has a, a, a flat chest with a radiotherapy uh, skin changes as well? Uh, we can do a. We can go for a tissue expansion, and mm -hmm. you can put a prosthesis if the patient cannot afford uh, that. A prosthesis after a tissue expansion, we can give a you know a, a tissue flap. It needs anyway to be skin needs to be expanded. Skin needs to be expanded in any case. Right. Thank you. Dr. Divya, Divya Dr. Divya, are you there? Dr. Ravi. No. Two questions, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, what are the advantages uh, offered by nipple area loss sparing uh, mastectomy for reconstruction? Sir? Because uh, it might compromise on the oncological principles. With, uh, no, no, no. We don't compromise on the oncological safety to have nipple area complex retained. It's a well documented uh, procedure that nipple area complex can be retained for lesions which are far away from it. And there are indications to do a mastectomy. It's not that we are going to compromise on the nipple or complex, but if possible, it adds tremendously to the appearance of the uh, lady's breast. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Bharat Kumar. Dr. Bharat. Uh, hello. Yeah. Sir, sir, good afternoon, sir. Yep. Sir, uh, sir, how to plan the radiation therapy with respect to the type of reconstruction we select? I mean, uh, please enlighten us regarding radiation therapy and breast reconstruction. In, it, when does we are, the, it does not actually affect the radiotherapy because uh, it is a nave tissue, well vascularized tissue. If there is no skin necrosis, if there is no necrosis of the, the, the flat, <laughs> Just like any other patient who had a mastectomy, she can go for a radiation. Absolutely no problem. Absolutely no problem. Okay. One of the key things that is going to be seen in post-radiation, post-reconstruction uh, is that there may be areas of necrosis, which to a person who has not been used to reconstructing the breast, it will all appear as, uh, you know, hard areas. And there will okay. be no reason whether there is a recurrence or not. So, you know, other than that, <coughs> I don't see no issues. Uh, okay. So one has to and get followed up by the same uh, surgeon, you know. Okay, sir. And implant, implant versus radiation therapy, sir? Breast implant versus radiation therapy? Generally, generally, for patients who are going for uh, radiation, most of the people don't prefer a implant. Okay. Uh, because it has got a lot of other issues like uh, augmented capsular contractures, and yes. various other things. So, if at all you want to put it, you might put it at a later time after adequate tissue expansion. If primary therapy is more important than reconstruction, so each okay. patient has to be a different way. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, Dawal, Dawal, Vagadia. Uh, uh, in uh, omental plate uh, transplant, uh, need for microvascularization or just putting the omental plate and bulking the breast? No, 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 microvascular. See, you put the laparoscope, you know that you are putting the laparoscope through the uh, umbilical area or, uh, you know, uh, periumbilical area. Your first port goes in, your telescope gets in, and you assess the omentum, and uh, you have to now plan your omental mobilization, uh, you know, depending on whether uh, it's more of right side, more of left side you start uh, mobilizing the momentum from the colon. And once you finish that, and you have anyway put another two uh, ports, one in the epigastrium, one depending on where you want to put it. Just like you imagine that you are having a cholecystectomy or any upper abdominal surgery. You harvest the flap. And once you harvest the flap, the mastectomized area is a big uh, space. And through the epigastric port, you can actually bring the whole uh, momentum into the area. That's not a big issue. 
so the chances of uh, herniation is occurring well uh, if you look at the herniation it is possible it is possible but but that's not going to be a major challenge i suppose or sir second question the tram fare flip when we need the city ngo for look out the perforation uh, perforator site identification and we can uh, uh, take the adequate flip say again uh, tram flip tram uh -huh. We uh, need for a uh, city NGO to look out the perforation, uh, perforator identification. No, 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 no. You actually have got two different set of perforators coming in from uh, the the vessels. One is a lateral set and a medial set of perforators, and there are plenty of perforators. Not there are only one perforator. There are plenty of perforators, and you are actually harvesting, uh, you know, all perforators. Because you are not disconnecting the vessel, the perforator perforators are identified when you are doing, as Dr. Kapadia has said, when you are doing a, a perforator-based flap. That is, you are going to split. You are going to work your way, preserving the muscle, and you identify the perforators, and you just select one good perforator as you go in, and you can have even handheld Dopplers for that. It's not required that you should have a, you know, a CT NGO for that. No, handheld Dopplers will tell you whether these are good vessels or not. Okay, thank you, sir. Professor Ishwar. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Santosh. Sir. Yeah, yeah, Ishwar. Sir, you uh, try in the when you the larger amount of muscle you take. Do you routinely initially in the construction reconstruct with mesh plastic to avoid the larger hernias? Yeah, I, I put a mesh uh, for most of it, and that is most one of, of the advantages, as uh, Dr. Kapadi was telling, that when you retain the domain of the abdomen uh, yes, with all its, uh, you know, integrity, you don't have yes, to have a, a. No, the abdominal wall is the integrity of the abdominal wall is very well preserved. Yes. Uh, so otherwise, in these kind of situations, uh, we put a we put a mesh there. Looking into the last decade compared to the this decade, but, but in your in the series also, probably number of reconstruction must have been reduced, too, sir. Number of reconstructions? Reconstruction must have been reduced in numbers, or they been the same? Uh, well, it has come down. It has come down. Has come reason down. for that? What, what are the reasons you would like to co quote for that, sir? No, more of uh, more of early detections are coming in. More of persons. Yes. The number yes, of sir. number of uh, mastectomies are uh, coming down. Yes, sir. Even mm -hmm. even post near Juan, you still can try to conserve. You try to yes, conserve. Sir. So the number of uh, breast reconstruction has uh, you know substantially come down in the last. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my my span is nearly about twenty six years of reconstruction. That's uh, compared to last decade. Compared to last decade. Yes. So it has compared com compared comparatively has come down because we are prognosticating the disease with the various other modalities where early detection what you said probably these are the contributing factors and awareness patient coming in quite early period with much breast conserved area probably those are the reasons probably you can accommodate for that dr kaushal thank you sir thank you kaushal gautam so the same question that was asked by dr ishwar no? okay. about the mesh plastic Fine, fine. Uh, Dr. Shweta Kutti, what is the question you wanted to ask, Dr. Shweta? Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yes. Um, so, good morning, sir. So, good afternoon, sir. It was a very nice lecture, sir. Very informative. Thank you, sir, for it. So, the question is, um, I want to know, like, when, we're when we are harvesting a, a, a flap, is there a particular uh, measurement that we take, keeping in mind that the flap can go ahead and have undergo shrinkage? I'll say again, uh, uh, measurement that we take, yeah, like a prop. All, all, all certainly all reconstruction. There are lots of measurements available, but after some time, you really know what you want, and you just go on. Okay. You know, and, okay. Uh, you know, uh, measurements are there. You know, basically, if you can just look at the skin that is required, what are you going to do? Is you just put a fresh mop there, mark the skin, and put it as a mark here, and just make a little extra because you okay. can always cut it out and things like that. So, so all these things are uh, there, but over a period of time, you graduate, and uh, you know what 
uh, volume that you would at least uh, at the end of the length have. So is there something like we take a little extra than expected, or do we just keep it to the exact effect? No, oh, I will. I will. I will take little extra because trimming is always possible, and yes. uh, you know, if you are short, you are short. You cannot do anything. Yes. So I would. I would think that I would take an extra, and you can chip it off at the end of the year procedure. Be it skin, be it tissue. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. HMP, what is the question? Dr. HMP. Yep. Uh, please come again. We can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You can. You can. Sir, sir, I am a doctor here. How are you, sir? Is there any role of uh, of removing the the donor and recipient side after because uh, uh, related? To volume or this? I can't. I can't. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, audio is not good. It's reverberating, so you can't make audio. Something like this is do you keep drains in both donor and recipient side? Is what okay, I understand. Okay, okay, certainly yes, certainly yes. Any other questions? How much of time do we have, Radha Krishna? About 12 minutes, sir. Okay, then I'll just uh, show one tram. just. Yeah, but video will be fine, sir. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it would uh, benefit few of the people who have not seen. Uh, 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 just one second. Yeah. 